This is Sean and Sue's podcast on 92.7 WOBM. The Ocean County Breakfast Show with Sean Michaels and Sue Ma. Ocean County's best variety. 92.7 WOBM. Time for another edition of Sean and Sue's Jersey Shore podcast. And this time around, Sue, we're talking about everybody's favorite subject, Mac and cheese. <laughs> oh. Is there ever a bad time to talk about mac and cheese? No, not at all. Loving that. Remember, Kevin had the meat sweat, Sue. Ew. And you were perplexed. You didn't know about meat sweats. So we're <laughs> going to talk about that as well. How about your pinky toe, Sue? Remember, we were talking about how you busted up your pinky toe. <laughs> And Vinyl Records. It was my pinky toenail. Yes, yes your pinky toenail. Mm-hmm. And Vinyl Records, Sue, we, we were talking with listeners about their first records that they ever had. And uh, we'll find out what they had to say. So a lot of fun, different types of topics coming up with the podcast. <laughs> Be sure to join us uh, and check out what we're doing online at WOBM.com and Download that new free WOBM app, Sue. Very, very cool. Download it today. Good to have you with us, and good news for Chick Fil A fans, Sue. If you love Chick Fil A, the menu has expanded with a with a classic. Yeah, definitely mac and cheese, my friend. Wow, mac and cheese is coming to Chick Fil A. I noticed on the menu at Brick. It's already on there, the Chick-fil-A and Brick. Um, but um, pretty much all nationwide Chick-fil-A's by Monday will have mac and cheese. This includes a side of mac and cheese and the kids' meals, a choice of mac now, and cheese. Now, why did I already think that Chick-fil-A had mac and cheese? No, it just seems like a perfect did. marriage between mm-hmm. the, uh, the the two. Short fried chicken, mac and cheese. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it's like a picnic. It's like but a it's barbecue. More like, I don't think they look at it as fried mm-hmm. chicken. But uh, now, are they doing it with like a bre- like a breading topping or anything like that? Like you know, no, it looks good though. You know, From what I'm like more seeing of a country in pictures, style. Uh, it looks a little thicker than yeah. just the regular craft yeah, mac yeah, and cheese. Yeah, but uh, yeah, mac and cheese. So if Chick-fil-A. you're a fan of Chick Fil A, mac and cheese now on the fork mm-hmm. on the forecast. It's uh, on the menu. <laughs> Forecasted to be delicious. Yes, there you go. <laughs> just the image of Kevin Williams with meat sweat soup. <laughs> It's got me a little bit um, got me uh, thrown for a loop this morning a little bit. I don't even know what that means. What does meat sweats mean? Well, meat sweats. Like when you're eating too much meat? Yeah, when you have a lot of meat, then you, you begin to, to sweat. You know, no, well, you don't have to run to the bathroom. You just so start it's sweating. Hot. Yeah. Meaning it's it's a spicy? They're actually saying it's a combination of adrenaline and protein combo that actually make you sweat. It's Oh, I've have, never eaten yeah. that much meat. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Next time you have a good helping of meat, Sue, what? you might get the sweats, just like Kevin. <laughs> so now you're telling me what happened to you just now? Jeez. Uh, my pinky toenail is caught on my sock, and it's affecting me. Are you... And are you, I don't know how to get down what there. What kind of I'm shoes a, are you wearing? Sneakers you're with wearing, socks. Okay, sneakers with socks. Mm-hmm. Okay. But your your pinky toe... My pinky toenail is sort of bending back. Ah. I know. It sort of hurts at this moment. So you don't have them clipped. Remember, we talked about this... <laughs> Unmanaged toenails. Well, it's something I really didn't want to share, but I mean, they are clipped and they look okay. It's just there's a piece of it. Stop you making fun of my toes. I'm not making fun of your toes. I'm mm. making fun of the fact you haven't clipped your toenails. I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about vinyl records, Sue. It is national. Whoa. Wow, that's a skip. <laughs> That's going to scratch that record. It is going to scratch it all up. Yeah, we're talking about National Vinyl Record Day today. (laughs) And what was the very first vinyl that you owned? We're asking listeners at home to send in what they first bought when it came to vinyl. Mm -hmm. Raymond said he had a comedy album and also Janis Joplin's Pearl album. Oh, my goodness, yes. Now, this one's getting a couple of reviews here. Joanne and Tina and Susan all said that they had uh, the Partridge family oh, the partridge family word. album was their first that's so, so that's cool. what they had to say mm-hmm. uh tracy wrote in adam ant was her first album wow. that she ever owned jerry said kiss destroyer was his first so those are some of the comments that came in from listeners today so very about cool. the vinyl my record. very first a charlie brown's christmas charlie brown christmas yeah. i had kiss rock and roll over so mm-hmm. yeah if you want to go on social media let us know on instagram or facebook what was your first vinyl we'd love to hear from you wobm i'm sore today you know yeah. why <laughs> why well 
I had a lot of exercise recently, a lot more than usual, and I'm mm-hmm. loving it. My well, muscles good. feel so good. It's a but good sore. Bike riding and the you know the um, the water park, mm-hmm. Six Flags, a lot of walking mm-hmm. um, on uh, the boardwalks. Yeah. you know this weekend, so it was just fantastic. That's I feel good. good. That's good. But they're a little sore. Yeah. <laughs> Well, By the way, I wanted to thank everybody who uh, wrote in over the weekend. A lot of folks are wishing uh, April and I a happy anniversary, so I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that wrote in. We had a nice, quiet anniversary on the 28th year. Good, good. You know, we went over a little coffee house that's in town, and we mm-hmm. went over there and had coffee and sat and talked, just listened to music and just hung out. And then we oh, had uh, dinner at home and uh, put a little fire on in the backyard in the fire pit and just relaxed on the deck. And So we talked so about quiet. the 28th. Yeah, uh, and you said about the orchids. Yeah. Did you do what you said you were going to do? No, I didn't do anything with orchids. Mm. No, no, mm. no. It was just coffee and fire. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're talking about the issue of high schoolers starting the day later. A new pilot program is going to be tested. Governor Murphy is looking into whether or not pushing back the start of the school day for high schoolers till after eight thirty. They say this is based on. You know, sleep studies they've done where kids aren't getting enough sleep. Right. So they're saying that if you started the day later, they might be able to get more sleep in the morning and mm-hmm. then start the day later and be more productive. Mm. So we were asking listeners whether or not they like this idea. Yeah, what do parents think? Well, we did a survey. 53% say they do not like the ah, idea. Oh, okay. 53% said they don't like the idea. Mm-hmm. 29% said they do like the idea. Eighteen percent were undecided. Wow, yeah. that's a big percentage. Parents are speaking there, and parents are saying, "Ah, eh, keep it the same. They yeah. don't want it moved back." Right. Amanda wrote in. She said, "Kids." She said she doesn't support this. Kids need to start going to bed on time. Francine wrote in, mm. "I like it so that my son won't be getting the bus before the rooster wakes up." So I guess she's uh, saying, a lot you know, of kids catch the bus it's very in the early. Dark. So sure. she's saying it'd be a little bit, you know, later mm-hmm. in the morning for them. Uh, Megan wrote in, I feel that the little ones should start earlier since they have a little more prep in the morning than teenagers do. Mm-hmm. So these are some of the comments that listeners are doing. You can uh, sound off on our uh, social media, take part in the survey as well. What do you think about starting the school day later in high school, I did an article which I asked, "What do we need here in Ocean County?" Mm. Yeah, every so often, we like to kind of get a you know a little barometer going as to what people are thinking sure. and you know what it is that we could use. Some of the things that I pointed out, I said these were my thoughts because it was you know my opinion, and I asked for folks to give theirs. Mm. I said, "Clean up and reorganize empty strip malls throughout Ocean oh, County." Some look. Horrible. Hashtag eyesores. Mm-hmm. We've got to do something with these. Definitely. I don't know. Uh, pothole repair work on area roadways <laughs> here in Ocean County. Um, and I also said, how about train service? I, I know that's, a, you know, a big wish. Yeah. Uh, but um, a very, un, you know. I was looking over this. You know, train service would be great. Yeah, I've, from Point some... Pleasant South mm-hmm. and go all the way through down to Cape May. Yeah. Go through Ocean County. I right, agree you know. 100%. And I saw buses, too. Mm-hmm. We need more buses throughout Ocean County. Yeah. So... Uh, but here's the deal. I saw a lot of teenage places. Did you mm-hmm. see that? Yeah. From parents coming in, mm-hmm. a place where teenagers can hang out sort of like in I Play America, yeah. but maybe a little further south so mm-hmm. we don't have to go so north. Yeah. Yeah. James wrote in, he said to us, Sean and Sue, better public transportation. Yeah. So yeah, we, we hit on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wendy, she hit on this too. Better roads and infrastructure, you know, yeah. fixing those roadways. Uh, mm-hmm. Michelle wrote in, Sean and Sue, less development and more preservation. Mm-hmm. And that was a few, uh, uh, sure. you know, different folks wrote that in. Uh, George also, you know, was on the same you know thought that I had, train service. Uh, Cindy said, affordable housing for young people starting out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kim said we need to stop building here in Ocean County. Andrea wrote in, she said, less drugs. So, you know, it wasn't, you know, when I said, what do we need here in Ocean County? People went more in lifestyle 
than they did like, oh, we need another, you know, we need another supermarket or we need a certain store mm-hmm. or we need a certain, you know, type of no, thing. They went it was more the- lifestyle, things that affected their right. daily life here in Ocean County. So you can check out the story at WOBM.com. It's very, on our very app. good answers. I yeah. thought they were fabulous. A lot of folks writing in this morning. It's up on our Facebook mm-hmm. page as well. Let us know, what do you think we need here at Ocean County? We love hearing from listeners with Sean and Sue. So last week, I got a chance to do something. I've always wanted to do a ride along mm-hmm. with the uh, you know police, and I got an opportunity. We talked you about this. You already have a badge. So. Yes, I am a deputy, a uh, junior <laughs> deputy, and uh, got a chance to uh, work it out, and we want to thank the Toms River Police and, of course, Chief Little and uh, Jillian, uh, you know, their uh, you know, PR person for putting it together. And I got a chance to go out, but it wasn't in a car on land. I got to do a ride along with the Marine unit. So cool. In the Toms River Township Police boat, one of the boats that they mm-hmm. have. Uh, go out and kind of just get an idea of what they do because, you know, you wonder, you know, something different that we have here at the shore, obviously, is water. Not every police department in America has marine units, Mm -hmm. you know, and many of them here along the Jersey Shore have them, not just Tom's River, but a bunch of them right here in Ocean County, as well as up and down the coast of New Jersey. But I got a chance to go out with uh, the fellas there and, uh, you know, see what it's like to go out and patrol the waters, what they do and, you know, how they're making sure that boaters are safe and checking on homes, you know, waterfront homes. You take for granted that homes on the water, you know, have a different type of situation, you know, Mm -hmm access through you know you know people with boats and people might not you know, be their, there their backyards are to water so mm-hmm. it's not like they have neighbors right connected to the back of their home and such so anyway i got to go out and uh, you know see what it was all about and i did a video uh, with the officers and you kind of can check it out and see what we were up to cool. and uh, you know what it was Is like this it was what really they neat do every day yeah, during the summer they'll go They're out. They're in this boat every day. Yeah, during the summer oh, wow. they'll go out and, okay. and and take a look at different areas and uh, you know see what was going on. Officers Tom Herbst and Officer Graham Borg. Did they have a little siren on it? Just yeah, like yeah. I got to you know have them put the siren oh, on. That's great. You know they have lights on there, and it was interesting too because some of the neighbors when we go into the lagoons, mm-hmm. you know the waterfront homes, you know one of the neighbors yelled out, you know, hey, everything okay? Because you know they see the Tom's River police coming in, and they said, oh yeah, we're just doing a little routine patrol and they were you know just curious because you know you see the police you know just like you would if all of a sudden you saw police officers in front of your house you know at home you know driving around you'd kind of wonder hey you know sure so but yeah we got to go in you know and up and down the lagoons and out on the toms river i never realized how many recreational sailboaters are out there Oh my goodness! There's, so, I mean, because unless you're on the Tom's River or going along it, you right. might not see them out there because it's a little further up. But there's so many boaters out there, you know, and they just make sure that everybody's okay. And uh, you know, they have that's neat. They overlap with other, you know, jurisdictions. You know, the uh, Ocean County Sheriff. Uh, you know, also the uh, state police. Coast Guard, you know, there's a lot of, you know, Marine patrols that are out there and they sort of overlap each other and, uh, you know, make sure everybody's safe out there. But mm-hmm. we have a lot of water here in Ocean County. So there's a lot of different patrols out there and it was kind of neat. So the video is up. You could take a tour and a ride along with us and, uh, you know, see what it looks like right <laughs> from the boat. That. That's neat. Yeah. Where'd they pick you up? They actually picked me up. They brought the boat right into Huddy Park. <laughs> Cool. And we uh, boarded right there in Huddy Park. That is cool. Then we went out. We passed, uh, you know, uh, the uh, River Lady while she was heading out for a cruise. And uh, it was neat. It was definitely a, a once-in-a-lifetime thing being on a Marine police boat. And, uh, you know, I was thinking of Flipper. Remember how Flipper would be out there, you know, with the Marine police? <laughs> oh, so, anyway. You were in your glory, though, weren't you? It was It was a very oh, interesting, very that. informative mm-hmm. video. You can check it out. It's on our website and app as we <laughs> take cool. a ride along with the Toms River Township Police Marine Unit. Thanks to the police as we support our men and women in blue with WOBM. And this is something that a lot of people are talking about. Uh, it's a recent uh, mm-hmm. recommendation that came out from Energy Star. Tell me. Now, Energy Star is a joint federal program run by the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Mm -hmm. Uh, What they've done is they've put out their recommendations for where you should keep your thermostat at this summer, all right, Uh, with your air conditioning and so forth. So folks are like wondering, you know, if this is a joke. And no, it's not. This is what they actually recommend that you do, all right? 78 degrees when you're home. When you're out, leave your thermostat at 85 when you're sleeping, 
leave your thermostat at 82. Mm. Here's what some of the listeners are saying what? this morning. Elizabeth wrote That's in. That's just crazy. Elizabeth wrote in. She said, 82 degrees while sleeping means no sleep. Would be drenched in sweat all night. Where did they ever get this idea from? Ridiculous. Scott says, work outside all day and then tell me where it should be. Julia wrote, seriously? I'd die of heat stroke in the summer, and if not, I'd boil to death in winter, 68 to 70 year-round, she says. Mm. Autumn says, if I had my AC set at 82 at night, I would never sleep. <laughs> Bob wrote in, he said... Me either, honey. Listen to this. Bob says only a psychopath would set their AC at 82. <laughs> yeah, are you kidding me? Now, Sue wrote in, she said, with hot flashes, <laughs> that's a big No. <laughs> yeah, because, honey, I'm with you. We have the, that air on in the winter, Yeah, if need be. Pamela says, we'll all be dehydrated meat patties. So those are some of the uh, comments that are coming in. You could check out my story and get the link to the article all about uh, the uh, recommendations on our website at WOBM.com or uh, on social media, on Facebook, or on the app. And uh, comments are coming in left and right, what people are saying, and for the most part, no one says they can sleep at 82 degrees. I know at home no. we could not do it. Not at all. We could I mean, not do it. I, no, I, you maybe know. we're spoiled. And I just got a thing from the electric company said that I have spent 21% less on energy this year than I did last year. Mm. But yet we still keep it set at 70, 72 on the overnight That's hours. Great. Um, 82, yeah, I no can't. Way. Some people are writing, why even bother putting your air on at that point? Sleep outside. <laughs> <laughs> Just open up the windows for 82 sake. degrees. That's crazy. That would be warm. I've, I, I just, no way. Unless my air's not working, it never gets up that high. Yeah. 82 degrees would be unbearable. Mm. So anyway, check out the story. Get your comments to us. And uh, you can read all the listener comments. I put a bunch of them up there on my article. And uh, we'll see. We'll get through this summer and uh, hopefully not sweat too much with WOBM. <laughs> and we're talking about the Tooth Fairy. Today is National <laughs> Tooth Fairy Day. I'm out of the Tooth Fairy stages. Mm -hmm. You think? Yeah, all her teeth are out. Okay. All right. So she has no teeth. Uh, she, she already teeth. lost one tooth. A real tooth. Oh, so, so yeah, all her adult big... teeth are in now. Yes, but she already okay. she lost, broke one. So we decided to ask listeners, what is the going rate? Because I've been out of this for quite some time. Okay. I mean, uh, so I was wondering, what is the going mm. rate for the tooth fairy these days? I can tell you. I said, is it 50 cents? Is oh, it a no, dollar? No. Is it $2? $5? No. So we had listeners writing in, <laughs> and here's what they had to say. Oh, Cindy goodness. wrote in. Yeah. She said she gave her kids $20 for the first tooth. <laughs> what? And $5 after that. No. $20 for the so, first tooth? For the first tooth. I thought five was big. Christy wrote. She said $20 for the first tooth, mm. $5 after that. <laughs> Betty wrote in. She said, I'm thinking it's 10 or $20 a tooth. So, I was lucky when my kids grew up because it was, I think it was a dollar the Tooth Fairy oh. came. The popular answer looks to be around $5 a tooth of the listeners. Tony and Linda and Tracy and Mary and Stacy, uh, among others, all wrote in $5 for a wow. tooth. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Now, this one is, um, you know, interesting here. She said, uh, Dawn said, it was a dollar for the first tooth and 50 cents for the rest. Yeah. So, uh, 10 cents, maybe 50, like you said, but wow, that's a lot. Yeah, what did, what did your I tooth fairy bring? I thought $5 was a lot. Yeah, what did your tooth fairy bring? $5. Okay, so you're on the average then, I think, because I think that's what the average is here is five. But I couldn't believe it comments. was five then. Yeah. I was like, what happened to a dollar? Well, Mr. Some, tooth like fairy. I said, some are saying, you know, 20. Mm. I think I saw someone on Instagram post 50, but I was like, wait Don't a minute. Don't you wish now. we could just lose a tooth and put it under the pillow? I think I saw someone say 50, and I said, wait a minute, I've got a loose tooth. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> send, that, one of your... send that uh, tooth fairy my way. <laughs> but what if the $50. teeth that falls out when you're 50 and you put it under that pillow and uh, maybe $1,000? Well, if you put your dentures <laughs> under the pillow, yeah. you get nothing. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Sean and Sue's podcast on 92.7 WOBM. For more details, go to WOBM.com.